Hi, you don't know who I am, but I gotta say I am the biggest Lady in the Tramp fan. Literally, there was no animators, there was no directors. I was the animator, I was the director, I was... Why are we... You see this? We got the lady figurine. Next, what do we got? We got the cup, we got the mug. Oh my god, look at her, she me mugging, bro. What up next, we got the plushie. And uh, one of my friends, one of my best friends sent this to me, and I'm so fucking happy it arrived before Christmas. I'm like, gotta fucking love. This was also a gift uh, they sent to me, and I gotta say, I love the fuck out of this. It's lady with a little blanket, and hold up, she a fucking transformer, bro. Look at this. Oh my god, oh my god, what a fucking cutie, dude. And then we got this shit. This was at Disneyland, and this was all they had. This is not Lady, this is some rip-off shit, and it costs like $30, $40. And the only reason I got it is because it's literally Lady. Well, it's not Lady, it's... It's lady, you know. I had to cope. I was on some mad copium, so I was just like, you know, I'll get this shit. But this, this shit ain't lady. I'm sorry. Anyway, enough of the intro. How's it going, pups? It's a canine. You don't know me. I don't know you. Let's get straight into this review. The movie starts out with this very beautifully animated sequence. And I say beautifully, I mean beautifully. Like, holy. It's honestly very beautiful to see, like, what they could do. I don't know why they didn't just go for an animated movie. I know why they didn't go for an animated movie. Because Disney is, like, cheap and everything like that. They don't want to go back to 2D animation they they think like live action is the way even though like live action didn't really earn them that much money and might have put them in debt actually the one thing that put them in debt is strange world you see that shit ain't nobody go see that motherfucker as soon as strange world like flopped they raised the price of disney plus we go deeper and deeper into the city and it stops getting animated and starts turning into like real life and i think that's an absolutely amazing way to start this movie honestly i have no gripes with this in any sense it's basically starting off like the normal movie you know with the house and everything like that darling is like uh, about to receive a puppy and jim deer think he's like so slick because he apparently just made the dog just not able to like bark or anything like that like real dog why isn't lady barking at all in this segment it's a small puppy in this small little box it's dark out it's fucking like very claustrophobic you know that puppy pisses shit in there and now is crying because they're standing in their own piss and shit that puppy's 100 percent crying but apparently like nobody can hear its cries and so when darling opens up the present they're just like, oh my god, it's a puppy, oh my god, you got me a puppy, that's so cute, and honestly, it's a very cute scene, to be honest, and then, like, you know, after, like, I don't know, receiving the puppy for, like, maybe an hour or two, they're just like, okay, we're gonna head to sleep, and they put the puppy in the fucking kitchen, what owner and what universe puts a puppy in the kitchen as soon as you get it, it's like a newborn puppy, it's like maybe a week or two old, like, what are you doing? And then you're gonna go travel 30 feet away from it so that you can't hear its cries? Where's PETA? Okay, I would say PETA, but you know, PETA's not a good company. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who else is like to call, really. Animal control? No, they, I ah, fuck him. There's nobody out here looking out for animals. Also, one thing I do wanna talk about. This is a biracial couple. Oh my God, I meant to say it's a ratio. <laughs> and you know, the movie is set in 1909 it's set in 1909 and well you see you see racism was kind of a thing back then the odds of people living like this kind of it's kind of rare honestly you should just have white people in your movie like i get it you're trying to be inclusive but like think about the time period you know maybe be a little bit historically correct just just a tiny bit i love how i'm saying be like historically correct and everything like that when when there's literally fucking talking dogs i've lost my fucking mind lady starts heading up the stairs pretty easily and i honestly i think that's kind of fine it's not like a big issue that like lady didn't struggle or anything like that up the stairs i don't think that's like the biggest issue in the world but what i do take an issue with is as soon as lady enters the bed this girl, darling, pushes her aside 
and says, Jim Deer, oh, can you take care of this? And you know, uh, Jim Deer being the decent husband he is, you know, he's a fucking tool, to be honest. He tries to, like, shove off Lady and, you know, like, be like, oh, go back to your little bed or whatever like that. And then afterwards, he, like, puts down a pillow and he's like, hey, you sleep on this pillow. And he starts sleeping on it. And then Lady's just like, hey, fuck that shit. I ain't about that shit, cuz. And, <laughs> and then goes into the bed. Okay, the main issue with this is... Is that after Lady gets back up on the bed, this motherfucker, darling, you know what she does? She's like, oh, can she stay? Motherfucker, what? You were the motherfucker who was trying to push her off and say, I don't want you on the bed. What the fuck made you change your mind instantly, too? You didn't even apologize. You didn't say shit. You're just like, oh, it's my it's my husband's fault. Which, I mean, to be honest, a little valid. Okay, you know, go off. After all that jazz, they go through this beautiful transition. Honestly, the scenery and some of the transitions in this movie is kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. Like, this transition was just very nice. It was like the peak of the iceberg. You know what I'm saying? A very, very good shit. But anyway, after this transition, uh... I gotta watch the movie real quick. Hold on. <laughs> huh, another perfect day. After this beautiful transition, Lady wakes up everybody and speaks for the first time. And honestly, I get it's a little jarring, but I like this shit. I'm sorry, I'm a person who grew up on like underdog, you know, air bud. I like animals talking. I'm sorry. What can I say? I'm not a furry. I'm not a furry. Would a furry look this sexy? I mean, I mean whoo, she. Although I talk to a lot of furries on a daily basis, I personally just am not one. I just love animals. The rest of the scene is basically like Lady getting pampered and everything like that. And then she goes outside and she finds a rat. And honestly, this is very different from the original. But... I'm kind of down with this. I feel like this introduction of like the rat showing like the rat is like the villain at, or like at least uh, an antagonist or something like that throughout the movie. Like I think this is very good character building. I say good character building and it's a fucking rat. It literally does like nothing but like terrorize a baby. Motherfucker doesn't even speak. Motherfucker doesn't even have like more than two seconds of screen time. Like let's be real. After meeting the rat and chasing the rat, she just kind of goes like off to show trusty and Jocelyn, her new collar. And honestly, Jock being a female now doesn't really irritate me as much. Like, I honestly kind of like this addition very much, so. Like, I don't know, the dynamic between her and her owner, like, you can see the owner really, like, fucks with her. Like, the owner very much loves the fuck out of this dog. And, like, I really do appreciate that dynamic. Literally, motherfucker, John, the Mona Lisa for the dog! If that ain't a good owner, if that ain't good companionship, I don't know what the fuck! In like every single scene you see Jock lean in, she's kind of wearing some like fire ass clothing or whatever like that. She really knows how to address the situation if you know what I'm mean. Also, a little side note I like to add, the ragging on Trusty kind of makes more sense with Jock lean being a female. Because you know, they're both females and like Trusty's being a little borderline misogynist. Trusty's being a little bit of asshole. And so these two girls are just like, nah, fuck you. You're a fucking man. I'm gonna fucking talk shit about you. And I kind of, I support it. Ain't no way Jim Deere got this motherfucker pregnant. Oh my fucking god, I'm actually mad at this shit. You already know that motherfucker pumped in two times, then he flopped and it was over, bro. I don't know why I'm ragging on Jim Deere so much in, in this fashion. This movie isn't about sex at all, but like, fuck this motherfucker. They made Jim Deere a pussy. Next we transition into the tramp, and he's getting chased by like some conductor, or, like a boss of like the train company or something like that. And this happens. <laughs> oh, how are you gonna get your ankle snapped by a dog? Oh. My fucking guy, the tramp, was fiending, bro. Bro got so fucked up, he fell onto the rail. Ain't nobody railing his ass after getting clowned like that, bro. Be lucky you're straight. <laughs> anyway, the tramp goes on his merry way. How dare you? Bam. This movie is set in 1909. This is extremely rare for one, a black person to be out in the day enjoying a fucking sandwich, like let's be real. The reason why there's two black people here was because if the woman was white, you know that black motherfucker getting shot. They draining him of all his white blood cells. They wanna make sure nothing but color is inside of that man. <laughs> Man, this movie fucking sucks my ass. But anyway, he goes to the dog catcher, meets Peggy, 
and Peggy is having the worst hair day of her life. This is not Peggy. This is a fucking Muppet, bro. It's not even a Muppet, bro. It's like a prototype Muppet. It's so disgusting. But yeah, um, after doing some tramp shenanigans, he frees the two dogs that were in the little dog catcher thing. Then he goes to Snob Hill, which is pretty iconic because he meets Lady there. But in a very different way this time. So Lady starts spilling all of her troubles and everything like that, you know. She's having trouble because she's not really getting paid attention to. They're having a baby. They're doing a baby shower right now. And uh, she got called a bad dog. And so she's trying to, like, vent to Trusty or who she thinks is Trusty. I don't know why they made her just stupid as fuck for this one scene. After talking for, like, 30 minutes or so about all of her troubles and everything like that, she comes to realize that, huh, maybe that isn't Trusty. That voice doesn't sound familiar. And then so Tramp is just like, oh my god, I gotta lay low. I don't know why you were just like talking to me about all this dumb shit, but yeah, I'm here. And then she's just like, oh, I'm gonna bark. I'm gonna bark because you invaded my space, which to be honest is fair. I'm gonna bark, please. It really irritates me that she didn't see it sooner. Everything seems to be fine. Honest to God, this scene is why I know Jim Deere is just a fucking sub, bro. This is the type of motherfucker to have a Patreon and have one of the highest goals be watch the video early. <laughs> Jim Deere the type of bitch to put his phone in a cup of Sprite overnight and ask why his phone ain't charged. Lady is literally pointing at the doghouse like something's in it. And this motherfucker's like, oh, are you are you pointing at something? Oh, I gotta get confirmation. He's asking consent. That's what you know what? Never mind. I take it back, Jim Deere. You a real one. <laughs> After Jim Deere and the dog catcher do their thing, because they were talking for like a hot minute about basically stupid stuff, being like, oh, where's the tramp or where's the stray dog? Jim Deere just has like nothing but static in his head. Like he is the stupidest motherfucker. You could probably like contact a radio station with his fucking brain. After that's all done and the humans have left, Lady talks to Tramp and and this part kind of pisses me off just 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 a little bit. Tramp basically says you're going to be replaced by a baby and everything like that. And Lady doesn't really know what a baby is, but like apparently in this remake she just knows what a baby is. So, she has common sense to know what a baby is. But she couldn't fucking understand that Tramp was on the other side of the gate talking well listening to lady low-key lady kind of like calls tramp a little bit of a slur she says street dog but like the way she says it it's it's literally like a slur i don't know like every time you hear the word street dog it's like they're saying the biggest fucking slur i don't understand why <laughs> fucking street dog hey they got the time period right i mean it's the 1900s but yeah um getting past that um darling is basically singing to her baby which you know is normal it, it's in the original although the original had a better singer <laughs> lady goes up and like tries to see what's going on and um apparently they just really didn't like that i think she like barked once like accidentally and then um Jim Deere and Darling were just like, no, lady, she's trying to sleep, and then just shunned her. Not even joking, not even joking, they transition to the next day. They don't, like, rectify their wrong or anything like that, or explain to lady what happened. Nah, they're just like, ah, you know, another day. And then after, after a day passes, they literally fucking leave. They leave lady with Aunt Sarah and the cats, and honestly, this next scene is like, whatever, it's, it, it, it literally just doesn't matter. The old scene with the cats, it couldn't stay, obviously, because it was kind of racist, and you know, Disney sometimes just doesn't like racism. <laughs> yeah, so they replaced it with this shitty song, and honestly, I don't really care about it too much, like, it's, it's sort of whatever. Like, it's, this scene is just like, big, big filler. But one thing I want to say is why isn't Aunt Sarah hearing any of this? Legitimately, the cats are breaking all this like expensive furniture, all this other shit, like glass, and she can't hear shit. But as soon as it ends, she comes down and she's like, oh, you made this mess, lady? Like, it is the most stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. Okay, what happens next? Because I, I, I'm I really tired of explaining this whole movie. The more that I explain it, the more I'm just like, ah, oh, this movie's not the greatest. I don't hate it. I don't hate this movie. I don't hate this movie, but it's just not the original. Aunt Sarah gets a little pissed off. And she takes Lady into like this pet store to get a muzzle. What's weird about this scene is that the the owner of the pet store 
is acting very strange. They're acting very nice and doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to like put a muzzle on a dog. And honestly, that would have been more believable if it was like, I don't know, the 2000s, 2010s, you know, everything like that. But it's not. You know they don't give a fuck about animals. Anyway, Lady manages to escape the fucking pet store or whatever. And then now is out on the street. And she goes into this alley and she meets this dog who's very big, very ferocious, and apparently they just made this dog the stupidest motherfucker. I don't know why they keep making, I don't understand. Lady is being like cornered by this big ass dog and the tramp comes out of nowhere and tries to give Lady advice. Tramp was like subtly trying to say, you know, act crazy or like your rabbit or whatever like that to Lady, like right in front of the this big ferocious dog's face. The dog is basically stupid as fuck and it's just like, oh my God, are you serious? This 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 woman's crazy? Honestly, it's just men being massaged. Nah, but like this big dog is just suddenly getting scared because of rabies. Low key, disease is kind of like a scary thing. Like STDs, STIs, PSIs, PSAs, that's just no joke, bro. <laughs> anyway, Lady and the Champ kind of just fuck off to go get this muzzle off, which kind of makes sense. It's in the original. And in the original, they go to this actual beaver and like he bites it off or something like that. Like, I, I actually know, I remember. It, it was like a log sort of system, like that kind of got the leash off. It was kind of bullshit, low key, but you know, it's, it's a talking animal move. What the fuck do you expect? In the remake, they go to the beaver and it's like a statue of a beaver and they basically put the muzzle in between its buck teeth and then they start acting weird after they keep trying to like pull the muzzle off the muzzle finally comes off and then they tumble on top of each other they tumble on top of each other and the tramp basically falls in love like the tramp the tramp like pops a little boner and it's just like oh my god i've never had a woman touch me it's very weird to see especially since these are dogs i don't really want to see this shit i'm fine with like cute romantic shit but like when they're on top of each other and you know a tramp suddenly falling in love i don't fuck with that shit it's just it's super fucking weird even for disney standards disney's one of the motherfuckers who like had nala doing the little bedroom eyes like I don't know, like this feels like a low low, you know, because these are real life animals. Anyway, now that the muzzle's off, Lady tries to get home by herself, but then, you know, the tramp is just horny as fuck and it's just like, hey, you know, you're a girl, I'm a guy. You know, he was a skater boy. Tramp is trying to be Lady's guide and honestly, Lady doesn't really have a choice. Like, she doesn't really know London at all. I think it's London. Like, she doesn't really know, like, the area at all. And she doesn't really know how to get home at all. So she's just like, you know, I guess this makes sense that you can take me. Anyway, this is the part of the movie to where it kind of gets boring. So, like, Lady and Tramp are trying to bond. And usually that would be absolutely fine. But the thing is, what sparked their interest was laying on top of each other. And so none of this gets any validity in my eyes. Like, I'm sorry, none of it does. It's a cute scene, what can I say? I mean, I still love it. It's still an iconic scene. After a full day of spending time together, the tramp decides to trauma dump for no fucking reason. And honestly, it's not that bad. Champ's backstory is actually not too bad, and I actually kind of appreciate it, to be honest. Really do appreciate this backstory. This backstory is actually very good for the Champ because, like, we never really get to understand why he's the way he is, and I think this is, like, pretty legit. I'm not gonna lie. So the dog catcher just randomly finds them in the middle of the night. I don't know why he's patrolling for this one dog, but yeah, sure. The dog catcher starts chasing them, and he chases them into the train station. And then I don't know why, but the boss, or the conductor, whatever the fuck it was, the person who got his ankle snapped <laughs> starts like um chasing the tramp as well. They have the tramp cornered and blocked off. The dog catcher on one side and the conductor, or whatever, on the other side. And Lady does one thing in order to distract them. Literally barks like twice. And the dog catchers just look up like... <laughs> 
like literal fucking NPCs. So they look up at Lady and they're just like, hey, there's another dog. And then Tramp just literally squeezes by because they were stupid enough not to catch him at the moment. And so Tramp runs out, Tramp is free, but they catch Lady and Lady goes to the dog pound. And what does Tramp do? The champ does absolutely nothing. Literally, he fell in love with this girl, but apparently she's not worth saving. I'm slogging through this, but anyway, we're almost at the end. So Lady goes to the dog pound, and this is one of the most important scenes, and I'm glad they kind of did it right. Absolutely nothing in this scene really matters except for Peggy singing. I'ma be real. Peggy's nasty, muppety, fucking ugly ass weave having has. <laughs> she starts singing. And it, not gonna lie, not gonna lie, this song doesn't really outdo the original, but it's up there. They did a very, very good job on this uh, remake. And I have to say, I love every moment of this. My only real critique about this is that like, they didn't really add any dog in the background. Like usually you hear the dogs going like, bum, 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 rough, bum, 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 rough. But it was just Peggy singing and honestly, I, I fuck with it, I fuck with it, you know? After that banger of a song, Lady's parents decides to come back and come get her. And they take her home and everything like that. They show her that they love her and they show her that they appreciate her and that nothing's really changing just because there's a baby. Even though they could have did that at the very start. But yeah, so everything's basically back to normal. Except it's not. The champ becomes very, very lonely after like, I don't know, two days? Hey. Huh. What do you know? It's the tramp. So Trap comes back with a gift in order to win over Lady because she's been in jail for the past, like, I don't know, 24 hours or so. And this bitch is acting like they've been together for 16 years. You said it yourself. Nobody else is loyal, so why should you be? Oh! See, digging in that shit! <laughs> How are you gonna form a connection in under a month? Not even a month, a fucking under a week. It's been two days. Motherfucker thinks he's a husband because he took somebody out to dinner one time. Pays off the Uber driver and it's just like, oh, may I have sex, please? Get a fucking grip of your life. So while Lady is moping in the doghouse, a rat comes up and crawls up the drain pipe and straight to the baby's room. And so Lady, naturally, being the good dog she is, she tries to go in and upstairs, but Jim Deer and fucking Darling stop her, and they're just like, why are you barking so much? I don't understand dogs. And uh, they put her in the pantry. And then uh, like five seconds later, the dog catcher just rings the doorbell because this motherfucker has no life whatsoever. I don't know why they're there at every interval of the day. Dude, these are like people who make their personality just one sole thing. Like, you need to get out and do more, man. Dog catcher comes up to the house and it's just like, hey, have you seen the dog or anything like that? And obviously the parents are just like, no, we haven't seen shit. We're, we're, it's fucking late at night, bro. But the dog catcher decides, you know, it's 1909. There's a black person in the house. I'm gonna invade this house. I mean, I know it's not like that, but like this motherfucker just invites himself into the house and says, man, thanks for the house, bro. I needed to place the rest for the tramp, you know? It's, it's, it's absolutely just brainless how he just enters the room. Anyway, while Jim Deere and Darling are trying to get this bitch out of their house, Lady is barking up a storm because she knows what's going down upstairs you know what i'm saying and so tramp is just like oh my god is that lady barking from like 50 miles away and so tramp goes to the back door he's like lady what you barking at and lady's just like there's a rat upstairs and tramp is just like you know what here's my chance here's my one moment to shine baby okay tramp just quietly invades the house and starts going upstairs and starts beating the rat's ass basically and while the fight's going on the baby's just kind of in the crib crying fucking making shitty music <laughs> let's go and basically the rat just jumps upon the crib and it's just like i'm gonna dive bomb this baby and so the tramp just knocks the whole ass crib over and makes the baby cry and just like kills the rat under some curtains so now that the rat is dead what does the tramp do he decides no i'm gonna hide the body he could have pulled it out and he would have had a better alibi Apparently, you know, he just wanted to pay respects to the rat. You know, it was a good fight. After 10 minutes of Jim Deere and Darling being some of the worst parents I've ever seen, they finally come upstairs and they're like, oh my God, my baby. And the tramp is obviously like kind of hurt from the fight. And like, he's just like, I can't really do anything. And so the dog catcher is just there for some reason. And he's just like, bro. After Jim Deere and Darling finally get the baby situated, they go downstairs and get Lady like 
because he's been barking up a storm. And Lady bolts it to upstairs, and she goes straight directly for the rat. And um, Dim Deer and Darling are just like, oh my god, there's a rat there? What the fuck is my hell? I didn't know I was that poor! After Lady shows her parents the rat, she bolts it outside and tries to catch up to the dog catcher. And honestly, the only reason Jim Deer and Darling are following the dog catcher is because their dog is following the dog catcher. Like, let's be real. I don't think they give a shit about the tramp. Like, realistically, come on. Lady goes and chases after the dog catcher. She's joined by Trusty and Jacqueline. And uh, Trusty is a police dog, well, used to be a police dog. He tries to sniff Tramp out. And his sense of smell has kind of gone off the deep end from like years of being old. <laughs> the scene actually reminds me of Underdog where he has this like super smell and he can just smell anything from miles away. It's very, very weird. So they catch up to the dog catcher and Lady starts barking at the horses in order to make them stop, you know, and everything like that. And uh, this is very different because in the original, Trusty was the one who uh, was barking at the dogs and getting in front of the vehicle in order to stop it. And I truly believe if Trusty was the person to like make the dog catcher like, you know, tip over and everything like that and like got ran over by it, I feel this would have been more impactful, way more impactful if Trusty died in this iteration. I really think so, but you know, that's just my take. After finally meeting up with the tramp and setting the tramp free, the dog catcher still tries to like go after tramp as if like <laughs> this is a new game plus. And then Jim Deer and Darling kind of roll up and they're just like, hey, you can't do that. That fucking dog knocked over my baby. My baby's kind of fine, but like, you know, they killed the rat in the process. So, you know, I support them. Like realistically, Jim Deere and Darling are not gonna be on the side of a tramp, let's be real. <laughs> I get Jim Deere is a little stupid, but I feel like he's morally right, you know? <laughs> anyway, so they adopt the tramp and then the dog catcher just like, I don't know what to fucking do with my life. So he just goes off and I don't know, like gets all depressed and thinks about like death and you know, regular things that people think about. And um, so it transitions into one of the last scenes. It's winter now, it's Christmas. Today is Christmas. Oh! But yeah, it transitions to that and um, it shows the tramp and lady, but there's no kids. You know the day we're dead ass not gonna make a sequel. The only reason they had kids in the first film was because, well one, they actually loved each other. They actually had a good connection with each other. And Disney wanted to make a sequel and it was a shitty sequel, but it, it brought us Angel. And Angel is an amazing design. I love this dog. But yeah, it's basically the end of the movie. It's basically doing this slow pan out. And if you look closely at Jim Deere, Jim Deere just like doesn't know what the fuck to do. But yeah, that is in totality Lady and the Tramp, the remake, the live action remake. I, fuck. This film is enjoyable, but it's not very good, you know? Like, I have a lot of qualms with this film. It's very different from the remake, and some things are very, very good, like uh, Jacqueline. And some things are just very stupid, you know, like how Lady and Tramp fall in love by falling on top of each other. Like, what the fuck? After doing this review, I kind of got lost in how I feel about this movie. I think this movie is just kind of average, maybe below mid. And I think that's why nobody really talks about it. Anyway, that's kind of all I have right now. Thank you if you watched through the whole video. Like, I really support you guys. I have a Patreon. Oh, fuck. I'm going to chill. I have a Patreon if you guys want to support it i'm not gonna add any tears or anything like that like if you do, if you want to support me that's cool if not whatever i'm not here to add extra work because making videos almost every single day is already fucking work and i'm not here to add extra work that i can't fulfill so if you guys just want to support me that's absolutely fine i also have a ko-fi you can go donate stuff for me or you just don't really have to donate at all i'm not really asking for donations i mean i do want to make this kind of a career i want to be an actor i want to voice and so much shit. i really want to just be the best self I can before I die. So like, I'm gonna push myself very hard. And if you wanna support that, I absolutely appreciate that. If not, it's cool. And you just wanna laugh and have a good time with the videos, that's absolutely fine. But anyway, um, shh, shh, don't hear that cat. That cat wants to come in. But anyway, yeah, I appreciate you pups. I hope you're having a very, very good Christmas and uh, see you in another one.